The U.S. Capitol Police Chief has been testifying uh, before the Senate regarding several changes that have been made since the January 6th riot exposed some critical failures almost a year ago. Tomorrow actually marks the one-year anniversary of this riot. Meanwhile, the FBI is still asking for the help uh, from the public to identify hundreds of violent rioters who have not been held accountable. We're also learning new details about just how close the plot to overturn the election results was to actually succeeding. All right. Our Rick Klein, political director here at ABC News, has been following uh, the hearing as well. We've had so much going on this morning, uh, Rick, sort of double tasking a ton of breaking news along with uh, Chief Manger uh, testifying there before the Senate. Let's talk about some specific changes that he, al he already has mentioned so far. That hearing uh, clearly is still going on right now. But he did uh, lift up a number of changes that were made, still a number of changes he'd like to see happen. So what stood out to you so far about what he's happy about with regard to additional funding and help that Capitol Police has re have received since the attack on January 6th? Kira, what we heard from the, the, the chief today is that the, the, the funding has helped and made a big difference in terms of breaking down some of the barriers between agencies, a lot more interoperability uh, between communications methods, uh, uh, daily and, and weekly conference calls uh, and, and meetings, virtual meetings between the various agencies. And he says if something like January 6th were to happen today, he could, in, in a moment's notice, um, multiply the, the number of officers who are on the Capitol complex uh, very, very quickly. That was a big problem on January six was getting uh, the, the bureaucratic barriers down, getting the right people on, on the line to, to order the right people into place because there are so many jurisdictions that overlap when it comes to the Capitol. The Capitol Police itself was so overwhelmed at the time. So in, in addition to digital training, additional funding, and additional manpower, knowing that you've got the support of the other agencies uh, in, in the D.C. area and in the downtown Washington area. Uh, but we did also hear from Chief Major the expectation, almost a guarantee, that there will be another test like that January 6th, hopefully not uh, as severe but, but he said that is their, their expectation. The, the, the threat environment in a lot of ways is worse than it was a year ago. And uh, the authorities now are saying that they're prepared for something like it. But some sharp questions from senators about, uh, about the, the failures last time, I think, is, is tempered now by some of the optimism about the ability to, to repel an attack like that going forward. Yeah, and I thought it was interesting, too, how, how he pointed out, look, we're really different here at the Capitol versus the White House because we're dealing with demonstrations every day. We can have people from the public come walk up our stairs and walk into the Capitol. We have to be extra careful and extra vigilant. So we need the funding. We need the resources. We saw what happened. And our threats, uh, you know, are different. Um, and speaking of that, I know that you are hearing some new details about what could have happened, right, if by Vice President uh, Mike Pence had actually thrown out the votes on January 6th as he was being pressured to do uh, by then President Trump. What do you know? Well, what's striking, Kira, is that no one really had a roadmap for what would happen after that. Uh, I think it would have likely plunged the country into a constitutional chaos. Uh, perhaps the Supreme Court would have been asked to, to intervene. Uh, there was a big push to try to get Congress to meet quickly, to try to choose a new president. But what we've learned in the ensuing year is how little thought was actually given into the plan of what happens next. Keep in mind, January 6th was not just a, a march on the Capitol and then an ensuing riot and attempted insurrection. Before it was any of those things, uh, it was the day that Congress was going to come together to count the electoral votes. And it was a day that some Trump allied forces had in mind to launch a, a, an intricate legal plot uh, with, again, uh, unknowable consequences to try to throw out those votes and to plunge the country into uh, some kind of doubt about who the president would be, ultimately to have the election potentially settled by the House of Representatives. It's even possible, Kira, that this couldn't have been settled at all in the two weeks between then and the inauguration. And in a weird twist of everything, Nancy Pelosi would have become president because the Trump term would have ended and there wouldn't be a new president sworn in. So one of the, the victories of January 6th, that the process was carried out, Mike Pence uh, and others uh, just pursued their constitutional duties. They knew, as we know now, that there really wasn't another option, uh, that the, the process worked the way it was supposed to ultimately. But boy, did we come close to, to, to coming into um, an unprecedented type of constitutional turmoil. Clicker Director Rick Klein. Rick, thanks so much. Appreciate you following along uh, with us along with the hearing. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.